Cal Newport wrote a book called Deep Work. He's a theoretical computer scientist. Um, he took quite seriously the, the task of allocating the hours in the day for that kind of deep thinking. And then the mathematicians is, is theoretical computer scientists on steroids. So for your own life and what you've observed, uh, let me ask the big question, how to think, how to think deeply, how to find the mental, psychological, pragmatic space to really sit there and think deeply. Mm. How do you do it? In the moments you remember where you really deeply thought, what, was it an accident? Was it deliberate? No, it's deliberate because, you know, um, first of all, my first years as a mathematician, you know, uh, I worked every day, weekends, holidays, doesn't matter. Um, I didn't even question that, so I would feel something's missing if I took a day off. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it was just a kind of a sustained effort. The point is that uh, still the process is nonlinear, to, to, to go back to what we discussed earlier, that in other words, the way I see it is you just, you are making a, a, an effort to, to bring all the information into focus, what you believe is correct. And you're playing with different um, ways of connecting things. But it is a total miracle when, it, when suddenly there is inside strikes. Mm -hmm. It is not something that in my experience could be predicted or even um, anticipated, you know, or like brought closer. Uh, he, there is a famous story about Einstein that he used to, you know, go um, think, 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 and then go for a walk. And like he would whistle and sometimes. So I remember the first time I heard of this story, I thought, mm, how interesting. So what a coincidence that he, this came to him when he was whistling. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it's not. This it, it is how it works in some sense that you have to prepare for it, but then the moment it happens when you stop thinking, actually. So the, the moment of discovery is the moment when thinking stops. And in a way, you kind of you kind of almost become that truth that you're seeking. But you cannot do it by will in some sense. It's some, it's kind of like, you know how in the Eastern tradition they have this concept of satori, like in Buddhism, in Zen Buddhism, you have this satori, which is enlightenment. And so like the, the various reports of Buddhist monks or Buddhist masters who have had experience satori. But they say you can't, you can't uh, do it by will. You cannot make it happen. If anything, you have to relax to let it come to you, you know? It's kind of like that. It's kind of like that. So I think that what matters, but you say how to think. The point is that we're talking about such an esoteric area. Like mathematics is really esoteric area. It's a really strange subject where you try to, to fit everything in this very, very stringent uh, uh, set of rules. To well, obey those, set of, those rules. Isn't it basically the, the pure, the hardest manifestation of a puzzle that we're all solving in different other disciplines, but this is the, the hardest puzzle. But the yes cleanest. and no, because there's just a, a different, for instance, there is a different criterion for what constitutes progress. For instance, physics, a lot of arguments they make, they are not rigorous from a mathematical perspective. It is kind of an intuitive argument. Like we think it is like this, mm -hmm. and this is acceptable in the subject for a good reason. And on the, so there is some play. It's more, it's more like human activity, day-to-day -day activity. Like for instance, if we, you and I discuss something, you have an idea and I have an idea and we argue about it and something seems more plausible, something seems less plausible. And so we may decide to take this point of view or that point of view as a provisional sort of like point of view and go with it. Mm -hmm. In mathematics, it doesn't work this way. You either prove it or you don't. And oftentimes, you get to the point where there is this much you need to prove, and it just it just wouldn't would, wouldn't come to you, and you just don't see it, and it can have it can go on for months. Super frustrating, but go without on. it, it is it, it is nothing, kind of you know. I would love to hear your opinion uh, to the degree that you know it um, of the proof of Fermat's last theorem mm -hmm. by Andrew Wiles, mm. which seems to have this element 
perhaps for years, uh, to the degree that you know, perhaps can you explain for Mazalai's theorem mm -hmm. and what your thoughts are on the process that Andrew Wiles took that seemed to, at least from my sort of romantic perspective, seem to be very lonely. Yes, it's a lonely profession. And hopeless and, and um, ex and sort of the, pr the pr it, you put it really nicely because it's, it, it feels like there's a lot of moments where you feel like you're close. You feel like 99% is done. Yeah. And there is this one stubborn thing which just does not compute, you know, it doesn't happen. And you're trying to find that push for this last link. And it could take, and nobody knows how long it's going to take. 